Martin Lopez from the Curiosity Theory. And bust out my new book, Curiosity Theory, Transforming the Way You Communicate. And uh, talking today about crying. Not the kind of subject most men want to talk about. I find more women are uh, open to talking about crying than, than men are. Um, but it's just like wondering, like, why do we cry? So I want to set, share with you <clears throat> a couple things that I've been through on my journey. A couple things that uh, I've experienced and, and maybe that'll help you. And the, always the... The idea of me doing videos is 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 not a vanity thing because you know there's a lot of things that I do that are like more around vanity but so it's just not it's not really something I'm it's just not something I'm really interested in in expressing my vanity you know and uh so the idea is that it really that it could help people that it really could make a difference for people in people's lives and um I think it does because I get calls from people that say I watch your videos and so I want to thank you for that please you know, like as well, always share, you know, if you have any comments, please comment. Um, but I was thinking this, this whole weekend, this actually this last, this last, I don't know, maybe a couple of weeks, I've been having conversations with people and, you know, talking about crying and noticing how, and then notice how my energy uh, has been, around, how, is, 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 is progressed and has changed over these last, you know, three or four or five years. Um, you know, going through a separation, entering into divorce, all those things. So, um, like when I when I first when I was when I was back um, a long time ago, I noticed that I was I felt like depressed. I I just would feel very depressed, you know, very powerless, and 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 just didn't have a whole lot of energy. And so I battled with that. I battled with trying to trying to get off to to try to not be depressed, right? Get off of being depressed and. So I tried some medication and stuff like that, and it did help, but then it did kind of did fog it up my brain. So once I thought I got a handle on it, I, I, I stopped taking the medication, and this is probably 10 years ago or so. And and then just, you know, I decided, you know what I want to do is I want to, I want to work through whatever challenge I have. I want to be able to work through it my, on my own. And if that meant I had to read a lot. I have to do some inner work. I have to do some healing work. I was going to do that. I was just willing to do whatever it took. I was willing to do whatever it took to – to get myself to the place that I needed to be for myself without the, without the help of medication. I'm not saying medication is a bad thing. Just for me, it wasn't, I didn't want to take depression medication. So back then I felt like, I just felt like this, this need to cry all the time. And I didn't cry, but I just felt like this need that I, that I needed to cry because I had this energy inside of me. Just, it was just all this sadness, all this, powerlessness energy it was just it was it was interesting and i worked through that and i worked through that and then once i uh, was separated i was able to do some serious work on that and i thought that i had been very depressed so i worked through that and as i was going through the depression the idea of being depressed i realized that um it wasn't depression it was just fear is that i had a lot of fear inside of me and inside and just like had built up inside my body And uh, so I worked on that fear and the fear came from like insecurities, you know, it came from um, just a lot of that kind of energy, right? Uh, Anger, um, frustration. And that's where a lot of that fear came from. It was an inability to work with that. And then a couple weeks ago, I started to look at the fear like really deeply, like, am I really afraid? Because I didn't, I haven't been noticing myself being afraid of anything or of, or much, if anything. And I'm like, no, I'm not afraid. I'm not really afraid anymore. Like that fear energy isn't really part of me anymore. I said, okay, cool. So I didn't know what it was because I still had something inside of me that was just kind of, it kind of felt like a little off. And then I started listening to some some books and, and reading and I realized that it was stress. Like it always had been stress. And so I let the stress get away from me. And when the stress got away from me, it caused me to have more fear And then when I had more fear and stress, it caused me to be depressed and feel powerless. And then, you know, as I was going through it, there's something called an emotional uh, clarity chart, an emotional guidance chart. Uh, I'll put a link in the description. You can see. But as you go up and down in the emotions that we experience as human beings, you'll experience something. So let me look at the chart really quick. So above uh, insecurity is anger. Above uh, anger is worry. Above doubt is pessimism, frustration, uh, impatience. And so as you bounce up and down, as you're going through life, and and this is like a theory, right? As you're going uh, through life, 
you're starting to experience things. So maybe you feel guilt or hatred or rage or anger, but, but you're, but all you're doing is you're just, you're moving up and down the chart. And so the goal is, the goal is to get up, uh, is to get up at, to the next level, which you're dealing with, con, con, you know, contentment, uh, optimism, uh, eagerness, passion, love, those kinds of things. And it's not to say that, that I wasn't experiencing those things at the same time. It just felt like in the morning and there were certain times in my life uh, when it came to like work and it came to all by the things I wanted to accomplish that I fell down into the lower part. I was doing like what they call a, a downward spiral, spiral versus an upward spiral. And I always wanted to spiral upwards into the more positive feelings. And so as I was moving, as I found myself moving in the different directions, do, you know, doing what I wanted to do. Uh, and I, I realized one thing that, that um, in um, most people will say like crying is a release of energy and it, and it happens like, you know, during, during situations, like during like, you, oh, you got real sad or, you know, somebody hurts you or something. So you cry and it's how you cope with your emotions. You know, for me, when I started working out, when I started training for the Spartan races, um, the, the, the crying, actually, I started experiencing that energy as a release um, that happened in my workouts, you know. So it would be like an overwhelm of energy and um, that was like blocking me. So it was, it's something like this. So I'm like, I'm starting to run and I, I didn't like running and I, I'm starting to enjoy it a lot more now. So I didn't like running. So part of the part of the workouts or sometimes like you'll do four or five. 800 meter runs so you're going to run two three miles two two and a half miles and and you know typically it's like up this hill and back down so it's and you're doing it in a in a, in a period of time in addition you're doing like five or six obstacles you know in the middle of it so it's pretty intense so i would i would start running and i'm you know overweight so i would run and as i was running you know it would what would show up for me is the is the is the judgment of my weight the um the, the sadness around I weigh this much and I can't run as fast as I'd like to run. Uh, and that, um, and then I've given up on myself so many times in my life and all that stuff would show up, but I wouldn't necessarily be able to identify it because I was focused on running. Then later then I would go back and analyze it and say, man, what, what showed up with me? Like what was, what was behind that, that sadness, that overwhelm of sadness. Like I, I like wanted to cry and it was like all the disappointment I had in myself for the things that I didn't do all the, all the times in my life where I let myself down, all the times where I let other people down, all those different things that um, that had me downward spiral. And um, I, I would have to, I'd ha so when, at that point I would I would look at it, and um, you know my my de my degree or my certificate. I didn't finish my I finished the class, but I didn't get a degree because I didn't finish my undergrad. Uh, it was a master's in spiritual psychology is what I worked on. So I finished it and and all I got to do is, you know, anyways. So it's in spiritual psychology. So my training is in spiritual psychology. And one of the things they say in spiritual psychology is that you've earned the right to deal with another challenge. You've earned the right to deal with it's what's in front of you. So if you look at your life and you look at all the stuff you've been through, this is kind of what it means. If you look at your life and you look at everything you've been through in life, you 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 know you were you were a child and then you became a teenager and then you became an adult and then you have all the stuff that happened as an adult, and that idea in spiritual psychology is is throughout these different areas of life that you go through is you earn different rights to deal with different challenge, and so when I was when I was working out and I would I would like go back and say in my recovery part I'd go back and say so what happened like why why did I feel like I was I was I was about to cry why did I want to cry when I was running. And it was because I was pushing myself to pass the limits that I had given myself, past the limits of where I would I would normally stop. They call it an upper limit. And so I'd go to hit this. I think it was uh, George Leonard calls it an upper limit. And so you, I'd go and I, once I hit that upper limit, that was as far as I was willing to go in life. But it wasn't as far as I was willing to go as a 57 year old. It was as far as I was willing to go as a 30 year old, as a 10 year old. As a, and now when I, you have all these different experiences in life, you have all these different experiences in life. It creates a fake uh, upper limit, but because you've hit it so many times, you think that it's an upper limit. That's human beings think it's a, an upper limit. It's kind of like this, you know, how they how they train elephants. Um, so when you're a baby elephant, they put a stake in the ground, they tie something around your leg, around the leg of the elephant, and the elephant realizes he can't get anywhere. So when they tie the elephant's a big elephant, uh, they still use that little stake, but this big huge elephant could actually just rip that stake out of the ground and go be free but he's learned 
just like you and I have learned. We've learned as people, we've learned as, as human beings that we have limits and these limits are false. But these limits have energy in it. Oftentimes this energy is 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 like a sadness energy. It's like self-doubt. It's worry. It's all these things. It's the things that we cry about. It's the things that are worthy of tears. It's the things that are worthy of of, of those emotions. And um, even as you're going forward, as you're going up in the emotions, in the emotional guidance chart. So if you're going from, let's say, jealousy to worry, you're still experiencing an emotion. You're experiencing the release of jealousy. So you're no longer jealous and you're moving into worry, which is a higher level emotion, but yet still it has energy around it. And then when you get into joy and you get into eagerness and you get into hopefulness and all those other things, those things too have energy around those. And the spirit will cry because the spirit wants to experience, the spirit wants to experience you as a human being. And experiencing you as a human being is an emotional thing. So crying isn't a bad thing. Crying is simply a way that we deal with the emotions that we're experiencing. So when I look at myself and I look at what I've been through, what I push myself, what I put myself through over the last eight months, and then prior to that, over the last, you know, 50 something years, because if you know me, I've always been kind of one of those guys just always did stuff and I always did stuff because I always wanted to, I just always wanted to do stuff. I always wanted to improve myself. And, um, and I failed a lot. And when I failed, I created these limiting beliefs about myself and these limiting beliefs about myself were like a stake in the ground. So it just kept me closer and closer and closer and more caged. So when I became free and I used my separation as a, as a, um, a stake in the ground, if you will, saying, I'm now going to be free. I'm now going to experience my life for what I want to experience it. And I'm not saying that you have to, you have to divorce, you have to leave your husband, you have to leave your wife in order to do that. Because had I known what I know now, I would have done it better in my marriage. But I didn't know I had to go through this journey. And I'm grateful for the journey. I'm super grateful for the journey. Because like I said, I earned the right to deal with this journey. I've earned the, earned the right to deal with the challenges I'm facing right now. And, um, and, and so to me, that's what crying's about. That's what crying's about. It's, it's about celebrating. Like, crying to me is, is, is celebrating oftentimes that you went through something, that you went through an emotion, that you went through an experience, and that you're on the other side. And it's now those, that energy that you had inside you, it's time to release that energy and understand that you're on the other side of that and that, and that from the spiritual psychology standpoint, that you've earned the right to deal with another challenge. And, um, and so that's what I do. That's what I, what I work with. I work with men, you know, we approach, we approach the challenges that we face through curiosity. That's the whole idea through the curiosity theory is it's, it's, it's facing the challenges that you face in relationships, which relationships is the number one thing, place we're going to find challenges. We're going to always find challenges in relationships. Why? Because we're, we're, we're going to be challenged with the relationship we have with ourselves. First off, that's a big challenge because if we want to grow, if we want to become better versions of ourselves, we're going to have to face whatever is holding us back. So, you know, for me, my goal is to, is to get down 40, 50 pounds. That's my goal. That might take me 10 years, might take me five years, might take me four or five months. It's still something I'm committed to getting, to doing. And in the process, I'm learning. In the process, I'm learning about myself. I'm learning about my limits. I'm learning about my greatness. And, and that is often, well, it's not even often, it is always included with emotions. There's always emotions in, in, involved. Because if I'm releasing something from my past, it, it's there, it's, it's only stuck there because it has an emotion that sticks it there. Like every memory that you have, like those memories that you have that are deep memories, how do you how do you access those? How why were they anchored? They're anchored because an emotion attached to that energy and that the fact that the the fact that the emotion was the emotion was what, what anchored it in. So it anchored into your brain and into your body. So that if anything like that ever happens, you know how to deal with it. So that's what um, that's what we deal with. That's what the curiosity theory is is about. It's about it's about awakening yourself to that, awakening yourself to what happens. This is what this book is about. 
It's about awakening yourself to the fact that you're a human being, that you go through conflict, and that you're going to have emotions about it. But the emotions that you have around conflict, around fights, around arguments, around disagreements, doesn't mean that there's something wrong. It means, it really, all it means is whatever you make it mean, and you can make it mean anything. You can make the story, you can change the story. You can also change the impact that it has on, on your on your current reality in the moment and the future. So the idea of curiosity theory is, is approaching relationships. It's approaching relationships with people in in the in a way that you can use what's happening in the moment in that moment that, that's going on in the conflict or in maybe some of the celebration to tap into what's important to you so that you can also then ground yourself in what's important to you you could look neutrally at what's happening with the other person and be able to contribute to the other person so in conflict it looks a little bit like this it looks a little like this so Somebody says something and I get triggered. Someone says X, Y, Z and I get triggered. So then normally what I would do is when I get triggered, I'm going to react and I'm going to say something to somebody like, bah, you know, you ass or you jerk or something like that. And then if it's a friend or somebody in my family or a client, then later on, I'm gonna go, I should regret that one. I shouldn't have said that one. So how many times have you said something to somebody that later on you regret it? Like, God, I wish I would have known to, I wish I would have known to say this in that moment. Because we always come up with good ideas in the very end, right? Like after the fact, after we talked to somebody, after we said what we wanted to say and got our release, our emotional release, then we go, oh man, I probably wasn't a good idea. A day later, an hour later, like, yeah, I probably could have said this. This would have been smarter. And the next time you're in that situation, because you because you have the emotion that's built up around that, you go into the uh, reptilian mode, using your reptilian brain, that fight, flight, or freeze mode, and you do the same thing. So the, what happens in the curiosity theory, and I'll take out the book so you can see what it is in the very back, is this is what it looks like. You get, trig you get triggered, you react, and then you regret. That's typically what I'm talking about. The curiosity theory, we're talking about what if you can go in this little moment when you get triggered and go over to this side over here where you can actually observe, separate the facts from the stories, separate what's happening like what's actually happening. Wait, 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 let me see. There you go. So, and you can look at, you can observe what's happening in the moment, then connect to the emotion, connect to the feeling that's going on, connect to the need you have, and then versus, rather than, re, rather than react, you can actually act with how you want to act. Hello. And, um, and then later on, what we call it is review it. And what I say review is because when you review what happens, you actually anchor in like, hey, I did that really good. I had a client that said this to me, and normally I do this. And now when he said it, I, I respond this way because I'm able to separate the story of what I'm making it mean, the emotions that are getting triggered inside of me, and my need to be protected. And rather than do that, I can take myself out of the equation and say, okay, this is what's going on. How I'm going to treat myself is I'm going to treat myself as though I'm secure and I'm good. And I can now be there for the other person. And as the other person says what they say, I can apply curiosity. And I can say, well, I'm curious. I'm curious why you said that. I'm curious why you feel that way. Or I use empathy so I can be curious about what's going on. And I use empathy, which in the curiosity theory, we say empathy is your ability to, uh, to connect to an emotion that another person's having without stepping on that emotion. So a person could be having an emotion of fear. So I don't have to I don't have to experience fear to know that fear is an emotion that people don't like to have. A person could be upset. I don't have to be upset to understand and to have empathy for someone doesn't want to be upset. So if I have a client that's upset, <clears throat> I can empathize with what it's like to be upset. When I can empathize, I don't step on their upset. What I mean by stepping on their upset, I don't have to say I'm upset too. I can, you know, it's all oh, I, you know, it's all about saying I. So it's about, I don't have to go, I understand or something like that, because when, the minute I do that, I then become part of that conversation. In the conversation. Set. So the idea is to stay curious so that the person can share what the upset's like. So someone's, you can notice that someone's upset. 
and you could say, it seems like you're, I'm just curious. Are you, are you upset with this? Yeah, I'm really upset with this. Can you share with me a little bit more about what that is? And it's like, well, that's a, like, that's not something people ask, right? People don't ask you to share about the upset that they're having. Yeah, I'm really angry. I'm really angry that you're asking me for all this paperwork, Martin. That's what happens with me in my business. I ask people for paperwork or I'm thinking that we're going to close a loan and it doesn't close. And like, I'm really upset that you didn't close the loan when you said you were and like, oh, I can understand that, you know, but I don't have to talk about myself. I can listen to their upset. And, and because I don't know what their upset is unless they share it with me. So you could say something like I wasn't, there was some bills I had and I wasn't paying them because I was depending on the money that was coming from this. But I didn't share that with you. I said, I got it. Okay. Got that. Anything else? Yeah, I'm kind of upset with myself because I didn't tell you that. Yeah, and I just stay curious. Is there anything else? No, nah, well, when, when, when do you think we can close? Uh, we should get the loan docs out tomorrow. Okay, cool. See, and that's, and that's being curious because I'm staying over there with the person because the person that's, that has, the person that I'm serving in business is the person that's the only experience that's important. My client's job, my children's job, my girlfriend's job, my ex-wife's job, my family's job is not to manage my experience. My job is to manage my experience. And because I understand curiosity, because I understand the power of curiosity, I have the ability to absolutely help other people have an experience that, that they technically want to have. But they're not saying it because they haven't, they haven't, they haven't gone through the process of understanding it. So a lot of times they're in the fight, flight, or freeze mode, and they're just they're just reacting. They're in that reactive mode. So when you when I can be curious and ask them questions, just like this chart right here, just like this chart, they can observe their own facts and their own feelings, and they can connect with their own feelings and their own needs. And when they connect with their feelings and when they connect with their needs, then that that creates a that's a whole that's a whole different world that you're now you're now playing in a whole different world because when you connect with what's important to you which are your needs and somebody can see that and someone can acknowledge that and someone can be a part of that that's huge and 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 most people don't most people most people don't have that experience most people are busy sharing how they feel and then the other person tells them how they feel and it becomes a tit for tat. So no wonder why there's conflict because nobody's really talking about the other person. They're just talking about themselves. And if you have a need to be heard, a need to be understood, a need to be appreciated, if you have a need to, to, uh, to get your point across or, 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 or to be expressed and the other person is talking about themselves, you have no way to get those needs met. So then you're going to experience what we call yuck emotions, which are the opposite of yum emotions, right? You're not going to be going, hey, yum, yum, what a great conversation this is. Yum, this is an awesome conversation. I really love everything that's happening in this conversation. No, it's going to be yuck. Yuck, this is terrible. I hate this conversation. This guy's an ass. He doesn't listen to me. And so now you're not even talking about the thing you wanted to talk about. You're not even, you're not even anywhere close. You're on a whole different planet. Now you're dealing with somebody else talking about their stuff. We wonder why we have wars and all this other stuff. Yeah, because it's because as human beings, we're not addressing what's important for the other person. We're just constantly addressing what's important for us. If you can learn how to address what's important for another human being, that's real power. Because you're able to put your needs aside and be able to be there for another person. Not stepping on what they're going through, but being there with them as they go through it, assisting them, supporting them, but the way that they want to be supported, the way that they want to be assisted, the way that they want to experience it. And then they then get the opportunity to deal with the challenge that they face because they've earned the right to do that. You know, I look at when people ask me for help, when people, when I coach people, it's the, the privilege of being there for somebody that has earned the right to deal with the thing that they want to deal with. Like people that come to me because they want to be coached, or they want coaching, it's because they have an idea of something they want to work through. And they are saying, hey, I, I, I know what I want to work through. And the reason I'm getting a coach is because I don't know how to work through that thing. 
So let me throw my thoughts out here to you so that I can see my thoughts. And when I see my thoughts, then I'll make a decision about those thoughts. I don't need someone to tell me what to do. That's not being a coach. That's being an advisor. Like I'm going to advise you. I'm going to tell you what to do. And I have those relationships where I, where I consult and the people say, can you tell me what to do here? But for the majority of the people that I coach, the majority of the people that I work with, they have something that they want to work through on their, their, their own. And they're saying it, they're saying it out loud. They're saying, this is what I want to work on. Can you help me work on that? And then we work through that. And that's what the curiosity theory is all about. So what I recommend to people that I coach with is come and take one of my classes. If you're a man, come take men's breakthrough because men's breakthrough is going to give you a foundation of how the brain works in, in this situation, in this, how the brain works so that you have access to, to when you're, when you're, when you're triggered and you're reacting and you're regretting, you have access, you have power. And then you then know how to the, then do this other one, which is, is, uh, is observe, connect to a feeling, connect to a need, and then re and then respond, then go into action, and then later on review it so that you can see how do you did it, and then anchor that in. Remember we talked about emotions earlier. Your emotions are the anchor. So when you do things good, when you do things with a yum emotion, you're gonna have another anchor. But the, this is the way the brain works. It's bad news, guys. The problem with the brain is it's really good at remembering bad stuff. It's really good at anchoring negative emotions and it's not real good at anchoring positive emotions. So when you do things that are good, you have, you have to actually take time to anchor them in so that your brain then remembers, oh, I want that feeling. I want that good feeling versus I'm trying to avoid that negative feeling. See, so if your brain is all about saving your life and, and getting you away from negative feelings, then what's gonna happen is you're going to be you're going to be focused on just getting away from a negative feeling, which is running, which is running away from something, which is dragging something, which is which requires a lot of effort. The thing about curiosity is curiosity. You actually you actually achieve more with less effort because you're compelled because you're like you want to do it. So when you want to do something, your body's creating all those emotions, all those endorphins, all those all those different things that happen in your body and in your in your brain that want you to go do something that, that are enjoying it. So the process then changes versus the process of, oh my God, I got to grind through this and all that. So curiosity, when you stack curiosities, life becomes easier. It becomes effortless. You move into what we call mastery. Mastery is when you're painting, when you're when you're actually designing your life the way that you want to design it. And you're not running from your life. You're running towards your life, you're actually being pulled towards your life. So you're in the experience of just doing what you want to do. And then you look up and all of a sudden you've accomplished all this stuff. That's why I'm able to do what I'm able to do. That's why I'm able to get up at four o'clock in the morning and then accomplish all this stuff where most people sleep in and most people drag themselves to their computer. And most people hate making phone calls and hate making videos. It's not, it's not what it's like for me. Most of my work, what time is it right now? Let me see what time it is. Uh, most of my, it's, it's, it's 1029, okay? I woke up at four o'clock almost, and I, and I started working about eight o'clock, okay? So I finished almost all of my work for my mortgage business about a half hour ago. Like literally almost all of it. So for now, between now, 1030 and the rest of the night, I got to go work out. I'm going to go swimming today. I might go to uh, MROC. I haven't decided which one I'm going to do. So I'm going to go swimming because I'm working on my cardio. Or I'm going to go to MROC, which I'm also going to work on my cardio. But I already do that, right? Then I got I got a couple coaching clients I'm going to talk to. I'm talking to men about enroll. I have a program this weekend for men called Men's Breakthrough. It's a Saturday. So I've got a lot of the men that have said they wanted to do it. So I got to follow up on those calls. So this is what my day is. It's like fun. It's like a whole fun day. And then I got a 12 o'clock call with a client that wants to, I have a 12 o'clock call with a client that wants to, um, uh, that wants to buy a house. So we're, we're going to talk to them. And then I got a, a, what I call a partner coffee at 11 in about a half hour. So I've got all this stuff that I'm going to do, but I'm enjoying doing it. And it's hard work. It's hard work. It's hard work just calling people over and over and doing all this stuff. But why do I do it? Because I understand where my emotions are. I understand where I put stories. I don't put stories around, uh, well, I used to put stories, this is hard, uh, you suffer. 
I don't, I'm not committed to suffering anymore. So what I, what I do is I've earned the right to be good at what I'm doing. Have you earned the right to be good at what are you doing, what you're doing? And, and if you are, if you have, then come hang out, let's do it. Come um, take the curiosity theory. So in May, I'm doing the curiosity theory for women. So girls, if you're watching and going, doggone it, they don't do one for, for, for women. No, I just, I'm going to launch the first one for women, for women only. So that's in May. So, um, you know, I'll just, I'll reach out to, I'll reach out to you and, 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 and talk to you about that. And, um, and this weekend uh, for men, uh, if you uh, work, if you want to learn how to be more powerful with your emotions and with and 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 be able to impact other people's lives powerfully, uh, let's talk. As uh, I I tell you something about this program that I created. Um, that like, listen, did I did I did I create it? Like, am I the guy? Men's breakthrough? No, I didn't. I like literally was literally walking on the beach one day, had a series of thoughts, and those thoughts actually led me to what I've created right now, which is the curiosity theory uh, and the curiosity theory for men, the curiosity theory for women. So I also do one for sales. So um, thank you for hanging out with me. Thank you for listening. God bless. And I uh, hope this brings value. Please like, and please share. And uh, hopefully uh, if you want me to call you and talk to you about my program, please send me a DM because I'm, tr I'm trying to call as many people as I can. But if you're like, Hey, he hasn't called me yet. It's not because I didn't want to call you just because I haven't got to you yet, but I will get to you. But I'd love to get to you sooner than later and have a, have a conversation. And where's my book? Um, I'm actually have a, I'm doing an interview. This is my men's breakthrough interview. I've done the interview with over, got probably almost a couple hundred men now. Uh, maybe not that much, but over a hundred men. Uh, I've got ex-CEOs from companies. I've got um, multi-millionaires. I've got thought leaders. I've got salespeople. I've got, um, television stars, people that I know, a lot of people. Hey, Scott, how you doing, my man? Um, and I love to reach out. Uh, I, I, I just a lot of amazing people, a lot of very successful people that I've interviewed and a lot of people that have moderate success and some people that are, are on the, that are just learning how to be successful. And what it is with this the conversation that I'm having with men is, is, uh, is I'll, I'll read the question, is when it comes to being a man in today's world, what's the biggest challenge you face? Look at Look at the kind of stuff. Look at the notes I have from people. There's a lot of stuff. People are saying a lot of stuff. This is things that men men are saying. Men have a lot to say about themselves and about their role in this world. In men's breakthrough challenge this weekend, Scott, I'll give you a call. Maybe you can come and take it this weekend. Um, men's breakthrough challenge is about men changing the way we communicate with ourselves, so that we can then change the way that we communicate with those people that we love, those people that work with us the people that live around us and the world so that we can impact the world the way that we were put on this world, on this earth to do. Like men have a, men have an impact that we can have separate from the, the version of impact that women have. We got to own ours. We got to get it back and own our impact, what we're put on this earth and what we're able to do. Not better, not worse. We're just different. We're put together differently. Uh, and it doesn't matter if you're, you know, it doesn't matter if you're straight or gay or anything. It doesn't matter. There's a way that we're put together and there's impact that we can have in this world and impact and contribution that we want to do. And it's, I, I just feel like it's really time for us to get back to that, get back to the impact and the contribution that we can make in this world as men for our own sake, because we got to do it. God bless. Hope to talk to you soon. Cheers.